But go ahead, grab your Bibles and look in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, it says, put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. Okay, that phrase, put on, what does that mean? It means it doesn't just jump on you. It means it's a decision we have to make. Okay, everybody get this. We've been talking the last few weeks. If you haven't been, if you're a first-time guest, we're glad you're here. Uh, I encourage everybody to go back and watch the last two messages. We talked about who our enemy is. We talked about our enemy and who he is. And, and so when we know who he is, it helps us to, to know and to be able to fight him and how to win. When you know your enemy, it helps you. And so we realize we have an enemy that we're fighting in order to win. Who wants to win this battle? Okay, in order to win, we have to do this. We have to put on. It's an effort. We put on, put on the full armor of God so that you may take your stand. Let me, let me phrase this right now. You may take your stand. That, that, that word, take your stand, is a phrase in the original Greek. It doesn't mean to take a stand like, oh, I'm getting beat up, and I'm, but I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. No, it's not standing, barely standing. What it is, is it is a stance of victory. Because this, this, this uh, image that he's given us are, is a, an image of Roman soldiers in total war, war gear, the armor, and they stand, if you ever you take pictures of them, they stand victorious. They stand with, incre- they're like standing, they're not standing cowering down, they're standing with courage. And it says when we take our stand, we're not taking our stand out of, out of hoping we'll win or out of self-defense, we're taking our stand out of victory. That's where we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live a life of victory. It says, it says put on the whole armor so that you may stand against your, the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of, ev- of evil in the heavenly realms. We talked about that a lot last week, going into each one of those and what each one of those mean. It says, but, but put on, once again, you make a decision, but put on the full armor of God so that when... So that when the day of evil comes. Now I want you to notice it doesn't say if the day of evil comes. It says when. Now that's one I wish they would have changed. (laughs) I wish, I wish, maybe it'll come. No, it says when it's going to come. Because here's the truth. We are all at some point in time going to come under attack. We have an enemy that's going to attack us, and sometimes it seems like the onslaught never stops. Who's ever been through that? And sometimes you get a break for a while, but it says when the enemy, the enemy's going to attack. That's his job. It's his job. If you just want a great victory, here's what I'll say, an attack's going to come. If you're going through a great attack right now, here's what I'd say, a victory's getting ready to come if you continue to stand. If you continue to stand, that's the hard part. Well, God, why am I not winning? Maybe because you're not standing. And maybe because you're not doing your part, okay? Put it on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground after you've done what? Everything to stand. After you've done all of your part, after you put on the whole armor, you're doing all your job to stand in victory. What happens? Stand firm then. After you've done all to stand, stand firm then with what? With the belt of truth buckled around your waist. We'll just stop right there. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist. When you go through, and I'm studying this, all the different parts of the armor of God. Starts off with, with what I believe is the, one of the most vital ones, which is the belt of truth. When the belt of truth, what is the belt of truth? The belt of truth is the word of God. Here's the thing. The belt of truth is the only, if you go through and look at all of the armor, all of the armor in scripture, the only one that you can grab hold of physically, you can tangibly touch, the only one that we can hold on to is the belt of truth. The other ones are things that we do, but this is one that we can grab hold of. And the belt of truth, here's the other thing about the belt of truth. If you were to look at, their, at, the, at the, the soldier's armor, the belt of truth was the, the least cool piece of armor. Like the other piece of armor were really cool. You know, like, I mean, like a sword. They had this huge sword on their side. Who thinks that's cool? You're like, oh. If you're like picking out armor, you could have, you're like, oh, I want the sword. And then they had a really shiny, awesome helmet that they wore. And, and you know, it, it has spikes on the top. You're like, oh, that helmet looks amazing. And then, then you know, they had this breastplate on. And, and we'll talk about it more next week. But it was like, instead of it being just a solid thing, what it was was many times it was, it was pieces of metal that were put together, like two or three inches a piece. And, and, and the more you wore it, the shinier it became. And it was amazing. It was really cool. They had their feet shod with the preparation of the gospel piece. Those were like not just regular shoes. I mean, they were cooler than like Adidas. They were, they were like those shoes that had spikes on them. They were weapons also. And so you're looking at all those different ones. You're like, oh, I'd want this, I'd want this, I'd want this. The one you probably wouldn't pick would be the belt because you didn't even notice the belt. But the belt was the most important one 
because the belt held everything else together. So you would put on a belt and everything else would be attached to the belt. Your sword would fall off if you did not have the belt. Your breastplate would, would move around constantly if you did not have the belt on. The belt is the foundation of everything. Everybody grab that. It's not the coolest of all of them that we would say, woo, but it's the one that holds everything together. And I want us all to realize when we get this belt on, it changes everything. When we get the belt on, that's the first one. When we get the belt on, the belt of truth, it changes everything. Go ahead, Ephesians 6, 14, it says, stand firm then with the belt of truth around, around your waist. John chapter 8, verse 32, it says, then you will know the truth. You will know the truth. And what happens when you know the truth? The truth will set you free. See, many people, many people live in bondage. They live trapped by things. Why? Because they don't let the truth in their life. And the truth, the truth is what will set you free. The truth is what will deliver you. Go ahead and look at the next verse. It's actually John 8, 44, not 32. Why is the truth so important? Why is it so important? Because if you look in Ephesians, it's talking about this enemy we fight, this enemy we fight. And we talked about different characteristics of the enemy. Here's one of the biggest ones. John 8, 44, it says, you belong to your father, the devil. And it says, and you, bel- and you want to carry out your father's desire. Now, he's talking to these religious leaders at the time. Jesus is talking to them because they're trying to rip him apart. And he goes, hey, you know what? Your, your words show who you belong to. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. Your father was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, not holding to the truth. Get this, for there is no truth in him. He's not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Okay, so why is the belt of truth so important? Because one of the enemy's greatest weapons, I would say his greatest weapon, is lies. It's deception. It's trying to have us see something that's not true and trying to believe something that's not true. Who's ever had a lie pop into your brain before? I have this written, and it's not in your notes, but I'd encourage you to write it down. You don't know a lie is truly a lie until you know the truth. You don't know that a lie is truly a lie until you know the truth. Okay, say you went to elementary school. You start elementary school, and they're teaching you math. And your teacher says, two plus two is six. And you're sitting there, and they're teaching you, and you're like, okay, 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 that's my teacher. They know what they're talking about. Two plus two is six. And you learn that, and that becomes, you know, somebody asks, what's two plus two? Well, it's six. What's two plus two? It's six. How many know, just because you believe it's the truth doesn't make it the truth. And you don't know what the truth is until you find the truth. How many times does the devil come and does he lie to us? He'll come and he'll, he'll bring a whisper. He'll come and he'll bring a whisper. And he'll go, you'll never be able to pay that bill. He comes and he brings a whisper and says, you're not worthy of anything. He comes and brings a whisper and says, no one will ever like you. Have you ever been around you or seen you? Why would anyone like you? Who's ever had whispers come in your brain? You know, you're going to be alone your whole life. And the devil comes and he brings whispers. And you know what happens? He brings these lies into our brain. And if we don't recognize that it's a lie, what do we do? We allow it to stay. See, if we don't recognize a lie is a lie, we let it it stay. And we we let it take residence in our brain. And then it goes from our brain to our heart, to our life, to everything about us. But when we recognize a lie, it changes everything. Who's ever heard something and it just stuck in your brain the rest of the day? Anybody ever heard anything? You ever been, uh, anybody, okay, who's, who in here has ever, you ever heard a phrase and it sticks in your brain? Who in here has ever heard a song and it sticks in your brain the rest of the day? That's where the devil comes and he brings something and he wants it to stick in your mind the rest of your day, the rest of your week, the rest of your month, the rest of your life. He comes and he brings something to stick in your brain. I got a few illustrations for you about things that, that can stick in your brain. Let's hear the first one. See, that'll stick in your brain. We got another one that's a little better. Let's hear this one. It's a Christian one. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is a friend of mine. I have a friend in Jesus. Jesus is a friend of mine. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is a friend of mine. He taught me how to live my life as it should be. 
to turn my cheek when people laugh at me. I've had friends before, and I can tell you that he's one who will never leave, leave you flat. Hey, hey, hey. <gasps> then we have, we have uh, this, this last one's my favorite. Here we go. This is a good one, though. See, how many have ever had something get stuck in your brain? The devil comes and he brings things that try to get stuck in our brain. He'll come and he'll bring a lie just to get it stuck in your brain. And if you allow it to stay there, here's what happens. I, I was talking to this, this lady after first service, and, and it was really powerful because God set her free from a ton of stuff. And she said, I heard this lie. I heard this lie all the time I was growing up. Somebody had said negative things about her. She had, I, I'd heard it my whole life, and it became part of who I was. And she goes, then I, I, had, I had other people in my life. I got married, heard the same lie. I had kids. You know what happened? The kids started speaking the same lie over me. And I was probably because you were living that lie. That lie became part of your personality. And she goes, yeah, I can see that. Here's the thing. When the lie comes, we have to realize it is a lie, and we're not going to let it stay inside of us. So how do we find out what the lies are and what the truth is? Here's how we do it. We get in this book. See, this is the one, this is the one piece of armor that we can actually hold on to, that, that, we can, that we can dive into. This is the one piece of armor that we can grow in all the time. See, I, I, I know growing up, I, I used to struggle. I struggled with worry. Anybody else out there? I just worry about things. I worry about things constantly. I mean, worry, would be, worry was woven into my, my life. I was, I was raised, it was part of my environment, raised by a single mom. And, you know, she worked in a factory. We didn't have much money, and she didn't mean to, but she would come home and tell me about all the bills we couldn't afford to pay. And I would lay awake at night as, you know, an eight, nine-year-old kid losing sleep at night worrying about paying the bills. And it was, woven in, it was woven into me. It was woven into me. This worry was woven into me. And then what happened? I started reading the Bible, and what happened was I saw that what had become part of my life was a lie, and the truth was there to set me free. I want everybody to grab this. I didn't even know. I didn't even know I was living a lie. I didn't even know that was part of my DNA at that moment until I got into this and I started to see the truth. And I started to see the truth and I didn't want to see the truth. I wanted to weave the truth into my life because I wanted to change the lie I was living into the truth that I could grab hold of. Everybody get that? I didn't want to live the lie. I wanted to live the truth. And so I started reading the Word. Everybody look in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, all, all Scripture is inspired by God. And it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. What does it do? It corrects us when we are wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. Look at this next verse, verse 17. It says, the word of God, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. What does the truth do? If you look at that prepare and equip, it means this. It means to fully outfit or to fully supply. It means every battle we go into, everything we face in life, when we have the belt of truth on, we are equipped to face everything in life that's going to come against us. I remember I started diving into this word, and I started seeing the lies that had been a part of my life. I started seeing the lies that had been woven into who I was. I remember the worry one was a huge part of my life that was woven into who I was, and, and I grabbed hold of these two verses. I grabbed hold of these two verses that changed my life forever. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says this. It says, to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what will he do? He will make your path straight. And I started reading that verse, and I didn't just read it. When I started reading it, I thought, I thought, man, I don't have to live like this. My life doesn't have to be bound by this stuff. I don't have to live this lie anymore. I can trust God for everything. But what would happen is every time I'd read that verse, four or five times I would hear the worries in my brain. The lies would come. Every time I would put the truth in, the lies would come. So you know what I had to do? I had to make the truth more relevant in my life than the lies. I had to have the truth in my life louder than the lies. The lies were trying to be loud, and I had to make the truth louder. So I did this thing. The Bible talks about meditating on the Word. Meditating on the Word. You're like, what is that in the Bible? Yeah, the Bible talks about meditating on the Word. What does it mean to meditate? It means to utter over, over, and over, and over, and over again. So what happens? It becomes part of who you are. 
And I remember as a, as a young college student, I started meditating on, on Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 because worry would come. I would just, I'd be laying in bed, and all of a sudden I'd start worrying. I'd be in class, and I'd start worrying. I'd be at work, and I would just start worrying. And so instead of letting that lie stay there, I started to put the truth in its place. I actually made a song out of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Who wants to hear this song? Anybody want to hear this song? If you don't want to hear it, hold your ears. <laughs> Some of you are holding your ears. That was so rude. Okay. My wife wasn't, well, you're just fixing your hair, honey. I thought you were holding your ears. Okay. Yeah, she likes me singing. Here we go. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Here, here's a, the song went like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. I'd be making a pizza. I was making a pizza, and I was like, no, no. That thought's not going to stay there. I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I will not lean to my own understanding. In all my ways I acknowledge him, and he will make my path straight. I added some more to it. Who wants to hear the rest? I'm singing it anyway. I added to it. Here was my verse. Trust in the Lord your God, and don't go by what your mind says. Trust in the Lord your God, and he will see you through. And I would sing that song over and over again. And I know it sounds cheesy to you guys, and I don't really care. <laughs> because you know what happened? Was the truth, got, the truth got in me deeper than the lies did. The truth got so deep in me. The belt of truth got so deep in me that it ran the lies out of me. Everybody grab that. The truth got in me so much, it ran the lies out of me. And we have to put the truth in us. If you're taking notes, you're going to write this down. Love, love for God's truth is essential if you're going to successfully stand against the deception of the evil one. Love for God's truth is essential if you're going to successfully stand against the deception of the evil one. If God's word is not a centerpiece of your life, everything else can easily fall apart. If God's word is not the centerpiece of your life, everything else will start falling apart. Who in this room has a verse that you've held on to in a time where you were going through a struggle? Anybody have the, a verse that became woven into who you are? Uh, to, to, the lie came, but instead of listening to the lie, you wove a truth. Who has a verse like that you've had in your life? Who wants to share that verse? Who wants to share? Anybody? Hands go down quickly when I ask for volunteers. What's your verse? Ephesians 2.10, I am God's masterpiece. See, the lie will come and say, you're not worth anything, you're not valuable. No, 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 I'm his masterpiece. I'm his masterpiece. Devil, you the one he kicked out. I am his masterpiece. Anybody else have one? Who else? I mean, I mean you guys are all getting good now. Here. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and then what happened? Then all these things will be added unto you. Anybody else got one? Right there, Yes. Christ Jesus, yes. Ephesians 4, 6, and 7. Peace of God will come in my heart. Why? Because I, I, see, here's what happens, huh? Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Yes. So you get that in your heart. See what happens? You get the word in your heart. You get the word in your heart. Everybody understand? The lies run out when you get the word inside of you. I'm not saying you read the word once and it runs it out. No, you, listen, the lie didn't come once, did it? Anybody out there? The lie doesn't come once. The lie comes over and over and over again. So you replace the lie with the belt of truth. You replace it and say, no, I'm going to have my mind full of his word and not full of the lies. I'm going to have my mind full of the truth and not full and not full and not full of the lies. And when you need help or you're under attack, here's what you do. Find a verse. Whenever you're under attack, here's what you do. Find a verse or two and meditate on it over and over again. Weave it into your life. And then what will happen? The lies will run out. And I'm going to say, the, the lies are going to attack over and over again. I'm not gonna, this, you're, you might get a break for a little while, but then the lies will come back. And you'll get a break and the lies will come back because the devil knows the path he wants to take. And how he knows most of the time, he knows the path that, that, that he, it, we're weakest in. And he will use that path over and over again. But what do we do? We get so strong in the truth that the lies have no place. The lies have no place because we get so strong in the truth. And the lies have no place. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it says this. It says, for the word of God is living and active. I wonder if I grab hold of that. The word of God, the truth of God is alive. 
Everybody understand? The truth of God is alive. It's living and active. Then what is it? Sharper than any two-edged sword. So what do we do? We take that word, and every time the enemy comes, what, he comes to attack us with thoughts. He comes to attack us with, with these images. He comes to attack us with lies. And what we do? We take the word. Now, is this going to take work? Everybody look, this is going to take work. But can I share a secret with you? It is so much easier now than it used to be. It is. Uh, man, every time I was attacked, I would always have to go to the back of my Bible because in the back of my Bible, they would have this thing called a concordance where you, you would go, addiction, and you would go through and you'd look, okay, let me look at verses for worry. Look, let me look at verses for fear. And I would go through and I would look them up. Do you know what you can do now? You can get on the internet. I've actually done this before. I've actually looked up verses about worry, Bible verses, Bible verses about worry, Bible verses about peace, Bible verses about provision, and boom, they'll just pop up, and I'll print them off, and then I say, I, I'm going to go through them, and I'll quote those verses every day, maybe several times a day, and get them so deep inside of my heart that every time the enemy attacks me with something, every time the lie comes, what do I do? I don't respond to the lie with nothing. I respond to the lie with the truth. Everybody grab that. I respond to the lie with the truth. And I respond to the lie with the truth. Well, some people are like, well, I've done that. No, you did it once. I'm going to give you some, another verse, Galatians 6, 9. Okay? Continue to do good. Don't give up. Don't grow weary. Don't grow weary while doing good. Don't grow weary while doing good. For in the end, you will reap a harvest. You will win the battle if you do not give up, if you do not quit. Don't grow weary while doing good. Who's ever been in the midst of a battle and the thoughts and the lies are coming and the thoughts and the lies are coming? The thoughts and the lies are coming and you feel like quitting and the thoughts and the lies are coming and you feel like quitting. But here's what happens. If you quit, you lose. So what will I do? I will get the verse in my heart. I will fight with the truth and I will say, no, I will not grow weary while doing good. I will not grow weary while doing good. I'm going to keep fighting this battle because if I keep fighting it, I will win in the end. And instead of letting discouragement rule in my life, what do I do? I don't let the lie rule. I put the truth in its place. Who wants an assignment this week? Four of you. (laughs) Who knows the areas you struggle in? Who knows the areas the lies come in the most? We all know. I mean, uh, mean, uh, mean, if we just honestly take an assessment, we know the areas where the lies attack us the most. What if the areas where the lies attack us the most, we get an arsenal of, of the truth? What if we get an arsenal of the truth that we sit there and we write it down on a piece of paper or, or we get it somewhere where we see it over and over again and we don't just see it, but we say it. Everybody get that. Some of you need to be writing some new songs this week where you get the words so deep inside of you. Here's what I'll say too. What we do so many times is the enemy attacks us and we just try to, uh, uh, uh. What if we attack back? What if we take ground back? What if when he attacks us, we say, oh, no, you just went there. And what is attacking? I think it looks different for each one of us. When the enemy attacks me, I go out and get somebody saved. <laughs> like, I'm going to go to Walmart, and I'm going to reach somebody who's going to hell. And they'll be like, bam, get you some of that devil. And, you know, when you attack back, he doesn't like that. For some, it's worship. I mean, you just start worshiping God with all your heart, or, or you go help, you go love, whatever it is, how you're wired. Make that work, but say, I'm not just going to be attacked. I'm going to be so full of the truth that I'm going to take the attack back to him. And I'm going to take back ground that was lost. Okay, here's a word for you. It's time to take back ground in your life that's been lost. It's time to take back ground that's been lost. The devil's stolen some things from you. It's time to take back ground that's been lost. How do we do that? We take it back with the truth. We take it back with the truth. Who wants to take it back? Everybody close your eyes all around the room. Lord, I pray for freedom in this place today. God, I thank you for freedom. God, I thank you that your word says, your word says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Yeah. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. God, I thank you, Jesus, the ones you come to set free, which is every one of us. We are free indeed. And there are some of you in this room, and you're like, well, I'm not walking in freedom. I'm not walking in freedom. I'm not walking in freedom. And here's the reason why. It's because you haven't let the Son in to give you freedom. You're like, why didn't he just come in? Why didn't he just bring freedom in my life? Why didn't he just set me free? Because Jesus does not knock down doors. The Holy Spirit doesn't knock down doors. God does not knock down doors. Here's what they do. If you look in the book of Revelation, it says this. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. I stand at the door and I knock. 
why does God not just push the door in and say, I'm coming in? Because he wants us to make that decision. He wants us to surrender. He doesn't want us to be robots that just follow his every command. He wants us to be children, sons and daughters of choice. That we choose to say, God, I want you, I need you. God, I want freedom, and I get freedom by surrendering to you. I get freedom. I get freedom not by fighting for it myself. I get freedom by, by surrendering it to you and watching you set me free from the things that are trying to destroy me. All across the room right now, there are many of you in this room, and you are struggling, and you are fighting, and you, you have things in your life that are kicking your tail, and you're trying to fight them by yourself when the fact is, here's what you do. Open the door that he's knocking, and let him in, and give him control, and give him freedom. Give him place in your life today. Maybe you're in this room today, and you've never asked Jesus into your heart. He's knocking because he wants to show you what a great life he wants to give you. He wants to show you your purpose, and he wants to show you your plan. But he won't knock the door down. He will just knock on the door. And when you come and you open it and you let him in, he will come in and he will change your world. All across the room while we're in prayer right now, if you are here today and you've never asked Jesus in your life, he's knocking at your heart right now saying, I want you. I want your heart. I want your life. I want to give you purpose. Maybe you're here today and at one time you asked him into your life, but you, you've gone a different direction and you're living for yourself and you're living empty and you want, him, you want him to come back and to fill you up. I want to pray for you and with you all around the room while we're in prayer. If you say, Tom, my heart, my life isn't right with God, but I want it to be and I need it to be. Pray with me. Pray for me right now. Today I want to surrender and I want God to set me free from the things that are holding me bound. And I want to live my life for him today. I want to surrender to the truth and have the truth set me free. All around the room right now, you say, Tom, that's me. My heart, my life isn't right, but I want it to be. Pray for me. Pray with me. If that's you right now, hands are already going up. Lift up your hands. Lift them up high. Look up here as you lift them up. God bless you and you. And God bless you over there and you right there. And God bless you right there. And over there, God bless you. Anybody else, you say, that's me. My life isn't right. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you, ma'am. One more second. Anybody else? Right back there in the back. God bless you. Yeah. And God bless you. Anybody else in this room who said, that's me. My life isn't right. My heart's not right. But I want it to be. Pray for me. Pray with me right now. I want to surrender and have him do something in me and through me. One more second. I want to pray for you. Okay, well, we're still in prayer right now. How many of you in this room, how many of you in this room, you would say, you know what? I know Jesus. I've asked him into my heart. But man, what I did was I let him in one room. And I have junk in these other rooms that are full of lies. But today I want him to have the whole house. And I want him to bring truth and run the lies out of my house. Some of you in this room, you know him, but you're miserable on the inside because you are, you're living life based upon the comparison of everybody else. And he wants to come and he wants to bring freedom in your life. How many of you want freedom in every area of your life? And you're going to let the truth in to every part of your life. Lift up your hands. I'm going to pray for you. Your hands are everywhere. Lead us in a prayer. Let's pray together all across the room. Everybody praying with me. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father. Everybody praying with me. Heavenly Father. I surrender. I surrender my heart. I surrender my life. I surrender my everything to you right now. Thank you for setting me free. Let the truth live in my life. And I tell the lies to go right now. My heart is yours. My life is yours. My everything is yours. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.